Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jimmy Star Show. Tony nominated singer, Broadway actor, American Idol alumni, Mr. Constantine Maroulis. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, how are you guys? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Before we get started, let me introduce you to everybody, starting off with our cool, outrageous man about town, Mr. Ron Russell. Kalimera. Kalimera. You want to stay in Greek? I do. Kalispera, really, for us here. Kalispera for us, but Kalimera is all I learned. <laughs> That's all right. Kalimera is what you get. You want saga po, apano, or um, what else do I know? Let's see. Uh, Tikanish. Tikanis, Tikanis, Gala, que si. I better than you do in Italian. Swing it out. Let's hear if you're Italian. <laughs> Very close they are. We're in a Greek mood because we saw my big fat Greek wedding too. Now what, what did you guys think? I was I, I did a screening with uh, Nia and with uh, John uh, Corbett uh, for a lot of the Greek community. Nick Katsouris, uh, great author and uh, friend to the big Greek community. Uh, he hosted it as well, and I, I thought it was great. I had a great time. Very charming and uh, enjoyed it. What, what about you guys? I loved the first movie, and the Greek. I come from Astoria. Astoria is the capital of, of He's Greeks. He's from Brooklyn. Well, of course. You know, Astoria. There's there's a hundred million <laughs> Greeks in in uh, Astoria. That's and true. Hundred mil. They didn't care for the film. <laughs> they didn't care for the film, not because of the film, but because it showed the Greeks as loud, gaudy, cafonic kind of uh, not uncouth people. Where my sister-in-law, no, my sister, my br my brother-in-law's sister, Despina, and her, Despina, Despina, and his her sister Mary Malios were Greek, and they lived in Astoria. Of course, they Oh, wow. See, but they were I think the first one was a masterpiece, really, you know, funny. and that all ethnicities could really relate to it, you know, whether you were Italian or Jewish or Spanish or Indian. Uh, so I think that's what was really charming. This one was a bit more specific Greek. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was a, it was a very uh, friendly theater, so I want to see it independent of that as well to enjoy it. And it's tough to always back up the success of... Uh, Early. Yeah, the first movie was one of the biggest movies ever made, you know, considering its budget. Um, so I have a special interest in this film because, film because I'm friends with Lainey Kazan, who I love to death. And I was a little worried when I started seeing the film. I went, oh, crap, it needs to do something right away. And then Lainey came on, and I think Lavey, Lainey didn't save the movie, but she moved the movie forward. And if you remember the last scene of Lainey when she was sitting there almost crying, talking about her husband, it moved me tremendously because it reminded me of my mother and father or anyone from Europe. And yes, I, sir. Yeah. I thought Lainey was brilliant in that little piece of work. I've never. And seen Michael Constantine too. He's all of the. Wow. Guys. I mean, he he had the the first film was really his, but he was a big part of this film. I I thought there were a lot of great honest moments that anyone could relate to. So go see Big Greek Wedding too. Sure. And the aunt was, oh, doorbell. She, the aunt was fabulous. The aunt yeah. was fabulous. The one that played the aunt, she's always great. What's oh, well, you know, yeah, Andrea Martin, she's Andrea Martin. an incredible Broadway actress. Uh, she was wonderful. Still rocking, still super hot. A few years ago, she was in the Pippin revival, which got a lot of great praise. And they were literally hurling her like 60 feet in the air, and she was doing it nightly. It was awesome. I hated what the critics did to this film. They really gave it a bad review, and I don't think it was fair. You have to judge the film for what it is. It's not Superman versus Batman, okay? It's a right. small, little, sweet, feel-good movie that when you go to... You, you feel love, good. You love the family. You want to be Lainey's buddy and live next door to her. And when you leave the theater, you say... This is when America was civilized before we started killing each other and blowing up buildings. This That's right. This neighbor cared for a neighbor. And they showed the typical example when the three waspy, cold English bitches were nasty <laughs> to the Greeks. And the Greeks turned around and showed them what it's like to be human when she said, please, please come into my home and enjoy our party. And that goes to show you what Italians, Greeks, and Jews are like. We're, we're the, and Spanish, I mustn't forget Spanish. We're the warm people. We're the people who, who love people. All right, so hold on. Here, we got to take a break. I've said enough. Second. I'm done. Hold on. No, no, you're not done. But hold on. Done, we done, have done. A I hear you, buddy. We have I think we can include a lot other groups in there as well, though. I've lived in Europe, I've lived in Europe and I was never received anywhere in France. 
as warmly as I was e in Athens. Well, of course, I had relatives there. They, they kissed my ass like I was a king. I mean, Aunt, Aunt Despina used to walk with me down along the waterfront, mm -hmm. put a suit on, and she introduced me to everyone that came along as her Nepote de America, you know, from America. She was so proud of me in my ugly suit. <laughs> if you saw this suit, it was gray and pink striped. I mean, they must have thought I was some flaming okay, bag. But hold on, hold on, hold on, though. <laughs> So Constantine, we have a chat room full of people. They're all like typing in pantings. They're throwing their panties. They all love you. They're talking about how hot That's you are. That's my so, line, so throwing first, panties. It doesn't matter. That, you don't not, don't use my word. It. Don't use my I like your, uh, I like your yellow watch, man. That's pretty it's cool. It's cool. It matches my yellow, my citrus yellow. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I noticed, yeah. yeah it's got turkey. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, first of all. Well, we're going we're gonna to have you on long because we like you. If we don't like you, we get rid of you fast. <laughs> All right, thank you. Say so hi to everybody in the chat room, first Me of all. Meanwhile, i got to go to my direct question. i no, got to get this. I, I got to get him to talk to the chat room. Please let him talk for uh, a second. What is he going to talk to them uh, for? Say hello to everybody in the chat room. We fight a lot, don't hello we? Hello, everyone in the chat room. And I want uh, they're saying too freaking hot. So special, I want, uh, there's there's three people you have to give a special shout out to. Lady Lake, Lady Lake Cindy, Lady Lake Jen, and Goddess. And, you, hey, and you're ruining like... my life. No, I'm not. Okay. You're ruining. He, you're making him ruin my no, life. No, I'm not. Please. please. My please. daughter, who is gorgeous, was the first runner-up in Mr. America in Eastern Division. You didn't let him do it. Wait a minute. Had a boyfriend. His name was Peter Pagonas. They own okay. four diners on Long Island. She's no longer with Peter. 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 <laughs> Peter. Well, but, exactly. Freudian slip, because you know <laughs> he's <laughs> Greeks. So how old are you? Uh, I'm 40 now. Oh, my God. What's your phone number? Let's get together. You'll come for dinner. <laughs> I'll make you all the, the grape leaves and the chopped meat. I'll do all Oh, I love that. Uh, the grape leaves are my favorite. My daughter can make the spindular things we Italians do in the honey with the little colored things, those gorgeous, delicious things. Did she get, did she get half of the diners in the breakup? No, no they didn't no, get no. married. No, they, they, <laughs> they, because she knew that her life would be that of a woman who's married to a diner worker. The Greeks work 24 hours a day. Oh, I know. Believe me. there's. It's different, though. You know, like I, I find I have a lot of friends um, that live in Astoria and Queens. You know, it's modernized so much, you know, that Gorgeous. my generation of um, – of Greek Americans, you know, 30, 40 somethings, they're they're doing like big things. They're staying in the community, but they're like taking what their parents built, their grandparents built, and they're they're diversifying, not just staying in the diner. There are kids that do that and pass it on generation to generation, but they're opening like a cool wine bar and they they you know they well, they're but, using they, the time uh, they're using the time that they that they learned and spent in in their parents' business to do cool things to cool places. Dimars, right? Now. All right, hold on, hold on. Oh, Dimars is blown up. Yeah, it's crazy. I know, but you're, you're gonna, gonna have them for I, the rest of the show. I didn't you let can me have do them. what we were doing originally. Cares about that I shit. do. Well, they do. Quick, They're all wait. like dying I know. for it. We're gonna give it. Let him die. Wait and die. We're giving him <laughs> the private part of who he is, so they understand who he is as a human. Then they'll love right. him more when they hear his stuff. I don't do those kind of shitty interviews like. What movie? I know, Who we're cares? Not doing that, but they we're care. talking about Dittmar's Boulevard, a Greek cultural center that used to be all Italian. I've been there with you. We eat there. Favorite restaurants across the street from my favorite Italian restaurant is that wonderful corner pastry shop. Have you ever eaten there? Uh, I'm familiar, yeah, but I I don't think I've actually eaten in there. There, you'll you'll commit suicide after you eat it. It's so delicious. Do you like no, I've been trying to stay away from the sweets. I've been trying to behave myself so I can. Still look, uh, you know, look all right, you know. Look great. Are you kidding? <laughs> so you, my daughter is a blonde with green eyes. She looks like um, Bernalisi or she really looks like Michelle Pfeiffer. And she's not. She's raised Italian. She cooks and cleans. She's no snob, no brat. <laughs> no, I'm serious. She doesn't spend money. She was raised by me. Very, very old-fashioned. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and, she's, and she's no putana either. <laughs> That's right. I know that. I'm serious. Hey, that would be great. We'll all get to hang. That would be cool. We'll go somewhere in Astoria sometime. We'll, we'll have uh, some fun. Are you kidding you? Are you think I'm pulling your leg? I need a son-in-law so bad I'm going to go out and manage. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down to come and hang out for sure. I mean, you know? I'll, I don't know about arranging the rest of our lives, <laughs> lives Listen, right here in this Listen, chat room. You marry my daughter, there may be an, a, car, a car in it for you. <laughs> oh, good. I like cars. Do you live, do I, you um, live in New York or do you live Wait in... a second. One more question. You would, you and my daughter would make me such gorgeous grandchildren. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. I have one daughter already. 
Oh, see, that's how we got to make the family bigger. But <laughs> you and my daughter would make such a beautiful baby. Well, thank you. Serious. We're going to all meet in Astoria, and we're going to go for... And we're going to go Greek dancing. Yes. Do you uh, live? Do you actually live in New York or California? Or you live in? No, I left. I left the city after almost 20 years um, and moved to the Burbs. Uh, my daughter and I. Uh, we have a home out there in uh, in Bergen County, New Jersey. Uh, it's uh, quite quite nice. She's got a great school, and you know uh, her mom is out there as well. So we. Uh, that's cool. You know, we have a great – I'm very close to the city, 20 minutes. I jump in the car. I love to drive. I grew up in New Jersey right there in the, in the very town, and we're back living in now. And uh, you're not, just really enjoying it, to be honest. I think you get a little older, and you start to sort of really appreciate things quieting down a little bit, leaving the city, seeing it in your rearview mirror sure. as you drive home to, like, green grass and, uh, From the bump, you know, bump baseball fields. You go through the tunnel, you get asphyxiated from all the fumes in the tunnel. Ugh. That's true. You, I lock it up. I lock, I lock it down in the tunnel. Are you still married? No, never was married. Um, my daughter's mom is uh, living uh, in New Jersey, and we're co-parenting and, you know, having a great time seeing our daughter just thrive in the school. And sure. it's really... It's really amazing being a, a young dad. So I, I like it. I, I have a crazy life right now. Of course, we're, you know, leaving tomorrow for for Hollywood, where I'll be for the next like, couple weeks doing the whole American Idol thing, uh, being a part of the the series finale, um, three night finale next week. Uh, but we'll be filming all weekend, and we'll be hanging and <clears throat> maybe some socializing too. So we have a couple of big meetings out there. So heading to L.A. and then uh, back to uh, start a new play in New York that you're going to hear about very soon. Actually, they said we can kind of talk about it, but okay. we'll wait till tomorrow. Press release comes out like tomorrow. So. Oh, you're not allowed. They'll have a fit. Okay, hold on. Okay, so here. Okay. You know how it is. Absolutely. Oh, I know how it is. This one's always telling me to shut up about things. <laughs> I, always, he, I tell him things, and then he gets on here and tells everybody. I we have four less. million listeners, and so. I couldn't care less. So like, he tells stuff that like, nobody's oh, wait, supposed to know. Let's get back to what's really important. But, um, hey, yeah, exactly. So work, work, work is cool. Hanging, you know, dad stuff. I love it. What's that? I'm excited for the Yankees. Are you a Yankees or Mets guy? Uh, we're not. We don't. We're not. A, we're not sports people so much. Come on, a little baseball. You have to have some romanticism for we're baseball gay. being a New Yorker. We're gay. We're gay, we're gay and gay married, men. so like we don't. So? Where'd you ever see fairies with sports unless they're doing the baseball players? It's <laughs> not true. Jeff Jeff Calhoun, my director from Jekyll and Hyde, is like the biggest football fan. He played football. He's a big athletic guy. Who is it? What's his name? Jeff Calhoun. Jeff Calhoun. You know, I was around when great director on Broadway. Yeah. I was around when they were rewriting a scene for that uh, musical, and the guy that does it is my good friend. His name is Norman um, Norman um, Sachs. You know the name Norman Sachs? I think so. Norman Sachs originated that years ago before it became big and hit Broadway. And I okay. was watching a rehearsal with Norman. It was wonderful. Even then, it was fabulous. You got well, you know, it's been one of those very complicated, you know, um, almost like it's got like a cult kind of attachment to it following where it's like it's so flawed but so beautiful and romantic and powerful. But the camp and it it's it's one of those shows that's just kind of um, music that's fast. An enigma, yeah. This is the moment. It's just music and beautiful, yeah. It's the moment. This is the moment is like one of my favorite like songs from all, and I've seen every yeah, Broadway it's, it's musical. It's the whole music. It's favorites. the whole musical. I love it. Now, it's a big song, and it was a pleasure to sing. In fact, I. Uh, die in that. We're we're launching all these like you know with the new music we're gonna take this the sick band out and all original rock shows and all that, but it is still nice to strip it down and do my kind of. Theater boy, rock okay. cabaret. What's your uh, so April 13th, I'm doing just that, like where it's just piano, vocal, a little percussion, and you're going to hear all of the Frank Wildhorn, the Andrew Lloyd Webber, the saw. Sondheim, the Leonard Bernstein, you know. Um, Where do you we... know, I love that stuff. You know, I, grew, I really grew up with the with a passion for, for that kind of uh, composition and, and singing and songwriting, I... storytelling, so. 
Where do we get tickets? You could talk to them all day. Uh, everyone knows you could go to ConstantineMaroulis.com really to find anything you need. I'm all over the socials. April 13th is a cool show. It's going to be in Westchester at this winery, mm-hmm. the winery at St. George. Uh, they do. It's really intimate. My first time playing there. I hope to develop a kind of cool relationship so it can be like a Joe's Pub North, you know, uh, Westchester. Bring all my Broadway friends there, host shows. It's great dinner and wine and cool place, man. It's adult fun, but good for the kids, too. It's in New York years ago. The finale was like that. Actually, there's somebody in the chat room named Guest Vicky looking forward to the April 13th show. You have a lot of fans in the chat room. and uh, so she's, Oh, well, what do they have to say? And, Hi, guys. Uh, they're all talking about how hot you are. But in general, tell them, everybody, what's your website again? ConstantineMaroulis.com. And you can follow uh, Twitter at... Twitter is uh, at Constantine M. Then at Constantine Maroulis is Instagram. And we're on Facebook, Constantine M. Official. It's so easy these days. You just... Just plug it in. Just click. And it all plug my name into the Google. Answer me a question. Do you like blondes or redheads? I honestly have no, like, I never discriminate with women. I, I love all shapes and sizes and kinds and everything. So I have another daughter, old maid. She's a redhead, gorgeous, and she's an actress. Her name is Deirdre Sarego. You could look her up. She's made films. She, cool. Yeah, she, he said, he said, he said, <laughs> well, they're two old men. What kind of films are we talking about? No, no, not those no, kind. No, no, no. She was she was in Elizabeth Town and you know all those sort of films. Well, that was a great film. Yeah, and she was also on our show for a couple of weeks as one of the hostesses. Couple of, yeah, every couple year. Of years. She's a blue-eyed redhead beauty with with milk. Wow. Skin. No, she's tall though. She's. A, I do love my New York girls, my my borough girls. You know for sure. There's something so. I don't know. It, 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 nice about a great New York girl, yeah. Long Island, Queens, Brooklyn, or Jersey girl. Yeah. Um, it's so, funny to think that my daughter's going to grow up and be a Jersey girl at this point. So Absolutely. Wrong with it. I have a, we have a dear friend in Jersey who you can't beat. What's her name? What's her name? Who I love? I Jesus, I'm getting old. I can't remember freaking names. My singer. My singer. Who, Joya? Joya. Oh, Joya Bruno from Exposé. You probably have heard of Exposé because they had a bunch Joya of Joya Bruno is an Italian from Jersey. You won't find a better human being in your life than, All right. than Joya Bruno. She is a typical Italian. Come into my house. I'll bake you something to eat. Have you guys seen Sebastian the comic? No. No, what is it? I've heard of Oh, my God. you got to look this guy up. I don't know how I missed him all these years, but he's been around probably about 10 years. He's super Italian. He's like his character is like very Guido, like from Oops. Chicago. Uh, you got to look him up. He's got millions of subscribers and and uh, views on his stand up. Um, he plays sold out shows. I never knew it. All of a sudden, on my wall, someone put this whole bit that he did about being Italian and dating a Jewish girl that will make you cry. This guy is. <laughs> this guy. I'm like quoting him nonstop lately. There no, you go. I have, I'm very late to the game, though. He's been around apparently forever. All my Italian friends are like, yeah, no shit. He's like, he's a big deal. I've heard pieces of him over the Sebastian, years. Sebastian, yeah. He's like, all right, yes. we're going to look him up. We'll look him up on yes. Twitter, too. And but see he does we'll the Italian the that's more or less like a Guido from Brooklyn. He, yeah, but no, more like Chicago. So it's got like a <laughs> Midwest sign of thing to it. You know, it's like, more like he's like, I'm Italian. You know, he's he kind of talks more like that, like real forward Midwest uh, thing. And it's got that uh, nice guy thing going on. No, no real cursing. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I, I want to ask him one more question and you can have him for the rest of the show. Because this is a question I'm really interested in asking him. It's not bullshit. What gave you the culione, the balls, to think? that you could pull your ass out of New Jersey, wherever you were, and become who you are right now? Did you ever in a million years dream that this would all happen? And if so, tell me what gave you that kind of chutzpah. I got to be honest, you know, I I have just this amazing family, and they always just so inspired me at being very young and looking up to my brother and sister, and they were much older than me. They hate when I say that. My parents were much older when they had me than my parents, uh, my friends' parents. And I just kind of grew up like loving old films and uh, music that they would play in the house and musicals. And I just got bit so early. They were both performers, my brother and sister. My brother, far more like, built a 
great career. Uh, Ethan Marulis, you can look him up too. He's done hundreds of records. As he's a produ producer and a singer and a, a ranger. You know, all, all he's like a writer, everything. So, um, and anyway, they. I just, you know, it was the only thing for me. It was. The, I mean, I loved sports, but I was never going to play sports professionally. I like to write and paint and stuff, but. What your parents? Do? I had to be. I had to perform. Like it was. It was something that. It was just born in me, and uh, it came very young, from a very young age. But I was just talking about this with my manager earlier, and uh, I had extreme stage fright, and it really wasn't until, God, I really was probably like 20 years old that I could really bust out and do what I, what I were, you know, I could, I could meet, like my talent kind of come together there for a little bit. But it took me years, even through high school, like I had extreme stage fright but I just live for it and I live for the work whether it's big money or no money I mean I just I love it I love being a part of a uh, creative process um, That's like a Rock of Age was off Broadway you know when we were just in a room the ten of us with like a young writer a young director a young choreographer and really just like built the fucking thing in like three weeks you know they had done a lot of work of course in LA and stuff but so, to be a part of that, there's nothing like that in the world. So, and the payoff. You have to. And sometimes you have flops too. Sometimes they don't work out, you know, or whatever. But flops make you better, my dear. I know the process is just so amazing. So, in a way, yeah, like I. I'm gonna hit. You know, I to... I'm gonna teach you how to interview. I talk, you talk, you talk, I talk. Otherwise, we're fighting. And now, okay. I'm. I'm uh, so I... I don't do the Skype thing much. There's like a weird delay. You know what? I hated it. I hated it since, but I got used to it. <laughs> now you. Yeah. So that's it. That's why I had the hoots. But my mother is a, is a, is a powerful like woman. My father too. Like they just, we just come from like a strong like heritage and cultural background. And oh, sure. I think that's what really gave it to me. Yesterday, Greeks, come on, please. But um, when you learn from your mistakes, are you are you an egoist where you don't see it? Or you, you sweep it under a rug and make an excuse for it. Those are the people that fail in this business. The people that fa face their mistakes and failures are the ones that go on to being the greatest. I have studied in my 52 years of being in this business. So don't ever I, make an excuse for a lousy movie or a crappy performance. Say, I can do better. Oh, yeah. I'm always on the quest for that. Like the you know, I know you guys aren't big baseball fans, but for me, that that's why I do like baseball, because they play 162 games a year. It's every night. They're always constantly, like, trying to better themselves nightly, nightly. And it's like being in a show on Broadway, eight shows a week. Yeah, you're telling the same story, but you're really furthering it and furthering it all the time. But and I it's in baseball. I have a Yankee friend of mine. I have a joke. What's Joe's last name? I, know, I forgot. Girardi? <laughs> no, no, he's Italian. From He played with the Yankees. They won the World Series. Joe, oh my God, Joe. What's this, oh, he's uh, like 80, so it would be a little... the 70s, so Joe uh, with the hair. Pe Pepitone. Pepitone? Oh, no, the other Joe. What the hell is With an S. And then also Sorry. a friend. Uh, Brent Allier. Brent Allier, who was a baseball player who won the series. And he played for the... Forgot Red Sox maybe or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I love I love my baseball, but you know, yeah, I, I I obsess over the details. I obsess over my failures and my my successes. I really do, and I really do try to better myself like every day with my work and my craft. So you'll fail. I um yeah, man. I'm I I. Or you'll do them over and over again, and your people will say, "Oh, him, he stinks. He does this." No, recognize your failures and change. So important. You got to re. I'm trying to get better every day. So okay. Have, wait, so one more question. I, I swear to God, but he's I not going to go. Question. We're not going to let him go. I, I like you him. You don't know that he has a lot of time, and I have. Stuff he's going to give us. About. He's enjoying. We're good. We're good. You're enjoying this interview. Come on. <laughs> I so am. Yes. This. Everybody else's interview is. They so keep saying boring. one more question. We're supposed to alternate, also, but we yeah, haven't I done know, that but, yet. But you know what, Jimmy? I have this headache for three days. That after I stop bullshit, I'm going to let you have it. I took an oxycodone, and my headache didn't go away. But I well, don't stay away from that stuff, man. That stuff is. He had a major surgery. You need to like. Why? No. Do, no, no, no. That's all you need. I had a surgery, so I had to take that shit. I have a headache. Like right now, my head's about. To okay, explode. let's go. So, you need some edibles. Yeah. So what? I, I forgot what to say to him. He's a okay. nice kid. I yeah, kid. He's, he's older kid. than I am. But uh, <laughs> he's 40. I'm only 38. So. No grays. No, I have no grays. Most of my hair. 
pretty good. This is not gray. This is blonde. <laughs> that is blonde. I like it. It's All right. Great. Anyway. So what the, what's going on in the uh, I want, in the trenches there? Well, hang on. Wait a minute. I want to know one thing about you. What do you think that this show is going to do for your career? What is your sort of anticipation? What show? This uh, whatever he's on, singing show. He's already. He doesn't watch American Idol because no. he doesn't like it. So I don't so, watch television. He doesn't Thanks. really watch anything that's not Turner Classic Movies. He's already been on the show, and the show is what yes, enabled him to do that. all of these he things. He won. He won. The, no, he didn't win. He came in sixth. Or well, whatever he did, he's gotten to be somebody on the show more than other people. Yeah, that, he was on the show ten years ago. And it took ten, what? It was ten years ago. And it took, oh, I know. It was actually longer ago. I think I know what you're saying, though, man. You know, I um, for me. I think because I was a little older when I was when I got to be on the show, and I had some you know training as New York as my background and a good school and and all of that. Um, I from the beginning kind of planned what it was going to be like over the next five years, ten years, fifteen years. So I began early to try to build like right. what I hoped would be a brand on Broadway and in rock and roll and you know different areas, touring and whatnot, and songwriting and producing. Uh, so. I, I kind of just put the pieces in place from from early on, so that no, I might not become this like stratospheric star like Carrie Underwood or something. But I knew what I would have to do so to you, like survive and have a really great life in New York and have successes. So, uh, for me, like now that we're going back for the finale of the entire series, um, there's a uh, there's some sort of bittersweet feelings, you know. I mean, I think. Being a part of the biggest television show probably in, in history has been really an honor. And to be someone that they recognize still from the show, and I, I think we'll miss it. But I think that it's such a great show that it's going to go away for a little while and then come back in some form sooner than later, you know? Was Lily McLeod on this show? No, she was on X Factor. Oh. But we had Nick oh, I don't know her. We've had oh. Nick but I liked X Factor. It just, you know, it was like a little late for here and there was already other stuff going on you know Billy I McLeod actually, we had, we've had Nikki Ooh. McKibben on a couple of times from season one and didn't we Ooh. what's the name we've on? had a bunch of people Who on we actually we went to see at the nightclub in New York the girl oh that, yeah we had um, I loved her she, what a voice Mel Melanie what was her name I forgot Melanie something she was, Melinda Doolittle Melinda Doolittle, Doolittle. Yes, we had Melinda Love Doolittle her. on I went and saw her at 54 Below we love Melinda Doolittle that's a uh, she's got an incredible voice nice. and the way she for sure okay. uh, I, I think I might see her for the finale they, they've invited a few of us Pop, back so Joe, um, Ron and, and Jimmy yeah tell her hi she's fantastic and we loved meeting her at 54 Below okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask some questions now first of all I'm done. I, I wanna say congratulations first we do have to say hello to these three people in the chat room because they're like De definitely snipping panties here, and uh, uh, so just say hello to he Jen, Jen, Cindy, and Goddess. Just say hey Jen, hey Cindy, hey Goddess, because they're all like, what's up, Jen? Cindy, hi Cindy, Goddess. What's up, Goddess? There you go. <laughs> all the ladies in the chat room are like totally loving it. So I want to kind of like go from the beginning to the now because you've done so much, and I didn't know who you were before American Idol. I have to say, but I was a super big fan of American Idol, and. You know, and after American Idol, I went out and bought the Pray for the Soul of Betty. I did, like, everything, like, because I thought you should have actually, like, won. I mean, like, Bo Bice, I mean, like, he's, like, gone in the wind. And so one thing I think... Uh, it's not true. It's not true. Okay. He's a good guy. He's he's the singer for Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Oh, that's cool. I Are didn't know that. Are again, Blood, Sweat, and Tears? He is, yeah. Oh, with him. I love Blood, Sweat, and Tears. One of my favorites. But I totally hear you, and, I th and thank you for yeah. saying that, you know. The, the thing with the band, I mean, I think that was so part of my story. I was leaving the band, but we were terrible, and uh, it was never going to work out. But, you know, of course, I'm on American Idol in front of 30 million people a night, and they're back home like, fuck, that's our singer. We're going to we're gonna get something out of this. So they basically, like, put, like, a record out. The whole thing was just dramatic and crazy and just, like, nuts. But we had a good time, well and it was a good part of my story. And that was the one thing uh, – that I recognized early on that I was going to be like a character almost on this television television show. So I had never seen it before. There had only been a couple of seasons before me, and uh, I was like in Rent on the road and in drama school before that and touring. So I'd never seen it, and uh, but boy, my life changed. I think that number one, because like you know, considering all the people that are on American Idol, and if you Google them to see what they're doing now, unfortunately, a lot of them haven't not been able to capitalize and, and take their talent and, and, and have an actual career like you have. So congratulations well, on that. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. And 
I only wish everyone the best, and uh, it's been nice to see a lot of uh, faces from the uh, from my time on the show and other seasons uh, recently. I, I was back on the show a few weeks ago, so. Yes, Thank you've you. turned it into a lot. So I've always been an American Idol jumpy. I have to say, after like season ten, I kind of stopped. When they lost all the original people, the Simon and everybody like were leaving everything for me. It isn't oh, quite this as. This is the show with Simon. Yeah, it's it's not is as. Is he a wait, son wait, of a wait, bitch? Wait. I have to ask these questions, otherwise I forget. I know, well, on, is he a crappy ass? He looks like a no. conceited he's not homo. Not at all. He's nice. He as looks sh- like a closet queen, a vicious old closet <laughs> queen. No, uh, I think he's an awesome guy, and uh, we had a lot of good times off camera together. He doesn't come off that way on film. He's not supposed to. Well, somebody he's should teach him. He's a character. He's a he's a brand. He he he's a he's a force. He's the he's he, it's wrestling. He's just it's like rude. wrestling to him. Rude. Totally rude. That's what he's supposed to be. That's his. But he's also like a mastermind, like kind of just like pulling the strings, like just in entertainment. So I know a lot of rich people in entertainment. <laughs> half of them are jerks. So what is that? Mean? Sometimes I watch, um, cause I'm I love my TV. So I have like I think the Axis channel plays X Factor London UK. I watch it on I watch it on YouTube every day. Like every time when it's going on, I watch. They put the whole episodes up on YouTube. Oh, they put them up pretty quick? Yeah, they put them up the same day. So There I- was this thing when I was in Brazil uh, last fall doing Rock in Rio. These guys installed this thing, Popcorn Time, on my on my computer. That's what probably effed up my computer. <laughs> but for months, it was like the sickest – basically, it's people like all over the world like live ripping TV shows – you know, and posting them right away, like, you know, you could be anywhere in the world and watch, like, The Homeland from that night, you know, it's insane. Yes. Uh, And then it just stopped working on my computer, I don't know why, but that was pretty sick. (laughs) So one thing, though, that happened on American Idol, because you were basically, like, the first heartthrob, really, the first three seasons didn't have, like, this, uh, like, I'm a really good-looking, like, heartthrob, they made you out to be, the like, the rocker guy, you know, I don't really remember them because I didn't even know it uh, that you're like actually classically trained. You went to the Boston Conservatory. I mean, like, like they didn't really like show all the stuff of how much time you've actually put into your career. You know, to get to to that point where you were at that time, they just kind of made you out as the bad boy, really good looking, like rock star guy who dumped his band. And uh, uh, and now, I, that, that, I don't know about the really good looking part, but. Um... Remember in Zoolander when he's like, really, really, really good looking. Uh, <laughs> but if you know anything about European families, Greek and Italian, their children are taught culture, are taught opera, are taught classical music. It's part of our culture. I remember my father would put the radio on and he'd do like this. Now, this is the ocean coming in. Now, these are the birds in the sky. He actually taught me what the instruments were saying. That's beautiful. Uh, I have a classical background, although I don't sing classical. Wait, wait, but here's what I want to do, though, then, because you got – there's a – first of all, I want to tell everybody. There's a, uh, 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 an article that came out on Billboard. It's called Secrets to Seducing the Camera, and it's by Constantine Maroulis, and it's hilarious. And um, I have to tell you, because My Funny Valentine is absolutely, like, my favorite – song of that genre ever so like i liked you before you sang my funny valentine when you sang my funny valentine i was like that's it like this guy's got to win this is fabulous even for my birthday i had ron like sing it for me um uh, because it's just like my favorite song so what we're gonna do is i have a video clip it's only like a minute and a half we're gonna play it and then and then after we play it uh, we're going to move forward to like, because I know you have two new singles and we're going to play everybody so they can hear your new stuff yes, and we can hear I what's going hear on. you sing. I have to judge you. But we're going to do the My Funny Valentine one real quick. Chad, do you have that? So is this the old school one or the one I just did on the show a few weeks ago because they had me back? This is like old school from like back in the day, when your minute and a half clip when you actually did it. Oh. You're like staring at the camera and everything. It's going to be, it's a fun one. Chad, you have that, right? Let's do it. Oh, by the way, did we introduce is you? Is that Tone Luke? That sounded like Tone Low. Sorry, we didn't introduce Chad because Ron started talking, but this is a man behind the board, so say say hey to Chad. (laughs) What up, Constantine? (laughs) What's up, Tone? (laughs) So you introduce it. You introduce it for us, Constantine. It's only a minute and a half, and then we're going to play it for everybody, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. And Jimmy, you senile old bitch. Don't blame everything on me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Constantine, go for it. All right, what's happening, world? Constantine Maroulis here, uh, season four, American Idol. So we're going to we're gonna take it on back to about 10 years ago to Broadway night 
oddly enough. You see, they wouldn't let me do anything contemporary and cool. I wanted to do like some Spring Awakening or something like that or whatever. Jesus Christ Superstar, Rent. Uh, so I, I flipped the whole thing and I went back to Rogers and Hart, about a 90-year-old song, but I gave it this funky uh, kind of heartbeat, sexy uh, vibe. So uh, check it out. This is me on Idol Season 4 doing My Funky Valentine. My funny It was so hard back then, first of all, they didn't even use, like, monitors, and it's, God, it's so hard to listen to myself, because it's just, like, the intonation is just not great. Um, it, it sounds different than it did in the room, like, that day. It's, like, so condensed and weird, but um, these days, they've been, like, they have, like, the perfect ear monitors, the extensive sound checks. It was a different time. It was, like, practically plug-in and play back then, so. What you do a system, you could come out sounding like Barbra Streisand. Listen, well, I'll tell you something. You hold a note, my friend, which no one does anymore. You've got a powerful, clear, nice tenor voice. Thank and you. I love your rendition of this song. It's Thank something you. I would enjoy listening to because I just did. You, You're okay with my book. You, you just did it again on Idol because I haven't watched the season. I stopped after they after Hollywood Week, so I haven't watched it since then. I have to go to Hulu and watch it. I was back. And I was back on the show a few weeks ago doing some mentoring, and what they did was they basically kind of relived two of my big moments on the show. I did them as like duets with current contestants. Oh, okay. So I did Bohemian Rhapsody, which was, you know, a weird odd matching to do as a duet but it was a lot of fun and i did funny valentine with a girl named jen and um uh, it was pretty great really funky and, and cool uh a great experience to be back so it's funny like harry loved it but he was going on about like how we didn't need to change it and honor the old song and the whole time i was talking to her in the mentoring that's what i was talking about you know, Rogers and Hart, give it space, the melody, the words, the lyrics, the storytelling. Of course, they didn't really show any of that it's stuff. It's... All time, though, favorite like song of like an older classic song. It's my favorite one. It, I, I have like 50 versions of it, which, though, like so is it. Do you have a recorded version of that on iTunes? Yeah, I was going to say uh, our season of American Idol, I think, has the only gold record as a as a troupe. And uh, we had this. This this record Showstoppers season four is it and it's uh, it's, on, it's on there it's a it's a track on Sony um, that you can get my funny Valentine American Idol Cosimo Rula something like that yeah because I looked for it and I couldn't find it because like I used to but my iPod like got crashed and I lost all well, the music your version is a, you could find it definitely okay. you, your version is not a sleepy version like the original was the original funny Valentine was slow slow moving. It's very melancholy. That's the way it's been it, it's composed. Way, this was a little different. Banged it up. You banged it up. You brought some life and pep into it. When I sang it to Jimmy, I sang whose version of it was it? Somebody else's. That, I don't know. Some rock and roll person. And that was difficult for me because I don't sing music of today. I sing ballads of years ago. 
in the style of years ago. And I found it to be the most fun because it was Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan's version of uh, my funny... Did you ever hear it? <laughs> no, I, got, I love her, though. I got to check that. Shaka Khan's version of Funny Valentine. It's fabulous. Bye. And I enjoyed it so much because it made an old song brand new. And you did that with your version. You took Thank the old you. show and you made it a new song. And that's what I like. You did like a couple. Thank you, sir. So I want to do a... I don't call me so check on the shit out of you. Can, you can, do I look old enough to be a sir? Call, I want to see Ron. if... Uh, hey, Ron. You want to see if the, uh, if the phone worked? Oh, yeah, sure. To get like a head start on that? Yeah, I really do. Okay, cool. Just to see. I mean, if not. You're talking to Thank you. I just got a new phone, guys. Thank you, Eric. Um, oh, we want to say And it's exciting because I'm like a di- – I'm about as dinosaur as it gets. I had an old 5S, um, and I just moved to one of those giant phones. It's, have, a, it's I like – hate them. I have it. <laughs> I, stand- I think that's what I have. It's a monster. S plus. What's this thing? Uh, yours is a 5S. That's all I know yeah, how to work. Anything one. more than this, I throw it away. <laughs> I just, I, that's what I just dumped, yeah. Forget it. Okay, so hold on. I want to do with it. Okay, so basically, you're on American Idol. All kinds of fabulous things came out of it. You got a Tony nomination for Best Performance by a Leading Actor in a Musical for Rock of Ages. You also had a cameo in Rock of Ages, the movie with Tom Cruise. You were on The Bold and the Beautiful. They created a character for you, 31 episodes. And, and we recently had Ian Buchanan and Sean Kanan Love him. on our show. And they were both like – because Ian, uh, Ian Buchanan won an Emmy for that show. And you know, it's a great show. It's been around forever. It's, it's the biggest uh, series globally uh, in, uh, in syndication that, that exists now. That's, that's what I'm told. And it's in like 50 countries. It's unreal. I mean, they're still playing my episodes in like other countries. It's crazy. I have to like- but, uh, really cool thing to be a part of. Uh, soap opera is not so much for me. It's kind of dying off, but it's still... Um, Good training. Yeah, absolutely. But, the camera time is essential. At your feet, because you're live. You fuck up. It's your fault. You can't do anything about it. You can't. Yes, sir. Because they basically just do like boy. one freaking take. Right. <laughs> yeah, one you take. You can't do. Let's do it again, boys. I want to do it. No, they're like moving on. No, never. And Aaron is somebody that everybody should want to grow up to look like. Oh, Ian. Ian, he's the most gorgeous fifty-something-year-old man. He is so stunningly handsome and well-groomed. When I grow up, I want to look like him. Absolutely. So, so you've had a you've had a great career. Besides musically, you got all these TV shows. You were in Mozart in the Jungle for a couple episodes. We had Malcolm McDowell on the show. Malcolm's uh, fun. Unforgettable, Law and Order. You've been on every major talk show on the planet, and now that you're on this one, it's the culmination of like your. Now every, you've done the best. <laughs> now you've baby. done the best. Ain't no touchdown. Yes. And last year, you did a commercial campaign for Lazy Boy. Did a it's first, back now, too. I know. I, I saw people tweeting about it with Brooke Shields. It's directed by what Fred Savage. What is Lazy Boy, a sofa? Yeah, Lazy Boy is like a, a furniture company. Right. But it's more than that. It's like an entire, like, all home goods. I mean, it, the the level of the design is is incredible. I mean, it rivals anything from restoration. Uh, the quality was, is kind of incredible, all American. Um, really a great thing to be a part of, and Brooke is just a – Super hot and classy, wonderful and you play, girl. I don't, I want, you play her wait, fictional wait, wait. Greek lover. Wait, he plays the fictional Greek lover of Brooke Shields. But wait Shields a second. My daughter, who I want to fix you up with, used to uh, manage all of Brooke Shields' affairs when she worked for Platinum in Beverly Hills. She had a slew of movie stars, and Leslie handled all of their expenditure and all of their life. Uh, oh, wow. Like a business manager. Yes. Well, more or less like a policeman. Uh, because what's her name was told not to buy a Rolls Royce Sharon Stone Sharon Stone, and she went ahead and bought the Rolls Royce then she smashed it into the pole in her garage and said that the blinking light wasn't working it goes tweet 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 and she wanted a brand new Rolls not this one repaired (laughs) so my daughter had to negotiate that for Brooke Shields and Brooke Shields got a little rough with my daughter and said something like oh fuck it Leslie and Leslie said, listen, my father's Italian. My father's from Brooklyn. I was raised with that language. So if you think you're shocking me, don't. Because if I let it go, you're going to be shocked at what I have. And they became the best of friends from that. Well, good. I, I thought she she's an awesome chick. and uh, oh, She's a lady that knows what she wants. She's a tough hombre in business. Very Sharon Stone, very okay. tough in business. So hold on, then you had the title, the title in uh, Jekyll and Hyde. You got a Drama League Award nomination. You were with Deborah Cox, which I met Deborah Cox many years ago. She's fabulous, and she's got a song, "Things 
will still be the same or something, whatever. Whatever it is, it's like the greatest song ever. It's like a great, like, things will be the same or something. Anyway, it's a great song. I don't know. I know, I know, uh, I know, uh, uh, um, how did we get here? Yeah. Oh, is that that one? <laughs> No. Oh, do it in the sports of free girl. And then you, yeah, that's that. Nobody's sports of free girl. Like share. Okay, hold up. Yeah, basically. You've released well, a bunch better. of music. If you go on iTunes, you got a bunch of music that you've released, and and you have two singles that just came out this year. One of them's called Here I Come. One of them came out last week. She's just rock and roll. We're gonna play. She's just rock and roll since it just came out. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, check it out, man. This is my first original rock record in many years. You know, uh, I'm co-writing every song on this on this album. The first song, Here I Come, in just a couple of short weeks, is over 100,000 streams on Spotify. So we're so excited that we sent another song to the webosphere out to you guys, the fans. She's just rock and roll. So it's available right now everywhere music is sold uh, on this little box thing, this computer, this little this thing, this device, this invention. So you can get it anywhere. Uh, She's just rock and roll on Spotify, iTunes, Here I Come. She's she's just rock and roll is uh, is it's a song I co-wrote with uh, Killer Deluxe and uh, it's it's sort of about it's like my it's about my passion for rock and roll but how it's sort of like a metaphor for you know all these relationships in my life as well so all right so you introduce it now Chad you got that ready let's roll with it all right you introduce it we're gonna play it hang on the line we'll let everybody hear it and we'll come back and talk about it. What's happening, world? Constantine Marulis here. You're about to hear my song, She's Just Rock and Roll. Take it out. One of you was a perfect excuse. Kept me guessing. Some girls that get so confused. But I know better. You were the innocent one. That much I know. Constantine, I love that you're going back to the rock and roll. Obviously, I love all the like Broadway stuff too, but that song is hot. Everybody in the chat room loves it. I think it's going to be a, a freaking hit. 
Thank you very much for saying that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. You know, Broadway will always be there. It will always be my home, and I look forward to doing more shows and originating more lead roles. And uh, my uh, my co-producing effort, Spring Awakening, will hopefully be competing for Best Tony Revival among, amongst other uh, categories as well this, this coming summer uh, at the Big Tonys. So uh, look for that. And we're attached to a few new shows. So tomorrow, big news dropping about a new play I'm doing in New York. I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. We're not stupid. You could give us a hint. Is it about a boy and a girl meet and fall in love? The general <laughs> plot. Is it about somebody gets murdered and there's a detective drama? Is it about people tap dancing through New York City? Close. In the rain? <laughs> Maybe. Now, look, I want to show you my daughter. If you think I'm bullshitting about what Let I'm me see. Let me see. Gorgeous. Can you see that? He oh, boy. I can't. Gorgeous. Nice. Now, look, Beautiful. Now, she's here with the movie star Jane Russell, who is my best friend forever and ever. We can't hear you. He you needs a mic. I need a mic. She, my daughter's with Jane Russell, my friend for years, the movie star, the legend. That's Leslie and Jane. Oh, wow. Look at that. Isn't she beautiful? She is. Sweet. Just like her father. Oh, bullshit. That's right. Just like sweet her father, yes. Her father's yes. a bitchy old man. But she's, <laughs> she's as sweet as a pie. You would love her if you met her. Hey, Chad. I kept him. Hey, Chad, put Here I Come. Let's just do like a like the first minute and a minute or so. Great. I like that so last song. Here. You know what it made me feel like I want to see now? Rocky Horror it has that yeah, it's got that kind of vibe. Oh, sure, there's some theatrics to it, some energy, some rock and roll, and, uh, and it's got we're excited about She's Just Rock and Roll. This is uh, another new song. This is a party, fun, fresh, friendly, sexy, dancey little thing called Here I Come. Lipstick perfect You got yourself together, girl Madonna in a dominant world Just, just, just shaking off that bitterness Ooh, my, my. It took some time Y'all, it took some time Here to be your witness The scene of the crowd So criminal Here I come
promise you guys it's available on all the digital download sites. He's got lots of great music up there, a new album coming later this year. You definitely want to go get Here I Come, and she's just rock and roll. I love them both, Constantine. And I, Thank you, guys. I Thank got, you so much for having me, man. I, I appreciate this. I'm a big fan, and uh, it's got, awesome what you guys are doing, and uh, I, I love the show for sure. Adam, I'm going to have to punch you. I'm going to give you a compliment. Let me in. Your music certainly does not stop people from tapping their toes or wanting to get up and dance. I love it. I would like it, and I'd like to dance to it. We, we usually put it in our private files, the crappy ones I don't ask for. <laughs> no, if I don't like the people's music, I just say, nice, sweet, goodbye. But uh, your music fabulous. is definitely foot tapping, you know, head jerking. It's good music. It's good. Thank you. You're good. We're, Everybody, every we're having, I appreciate that. You guys are good. We're big fans, and any we're just uh, we're looking to bring back a little rock and roll kind of fun, good times, going out and seeing bands and Love it. Having a crazy night. Love it. So here's what we're going to do, Constantine. Let's give everybody your website one more time. It's ConstantineMaroulis.com. Follow at Constantine M on Twitter, everybody. He's Constantine. What are you on uh, Instagram on Constantine Maroulis? Constantine Maroulis. Go, go Constantine Maroulis on Instagram. Make sure to tune in to the finale of American Idol this week. He's um, uh, going to be on for a bunch of nights, and it'll be a lot of fun. And... Uh, he's also got a next week, next week, next week. Yes, next week, you guys, next week. And then I also saw um, you have a concert in July or something in New Jersey. Yeah, we're headlining the New Jersey State Fair. It's going to be amazing. It's sort of like my my big, you know, kind of debut with the new band and a new set of music, the whole new look. Uh, we're really excited to bring it back to, um, you know, my roots. And uh, I've always loved the State Fair. So uh, we're really excited to rip it up, man. Fantastic. We're going to debut all of these songs and a lot more songs, too. So definitely stay tuned. I stay pretty active on there, even though I'm 100 years old. And uh, I love you guys, and thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. If, and listen. If, if you're 100, I'm 5,000. Oh. Know. And also, safe travels. Have a great time. We want to thank Eric, yes. too, for helping set this whole thing up. Eric. Eric, you're the man. Thanks so much. So rock and roll. Eric. Safe travel to you. Have a great time. Say hello to everybody. Enjoy yourself, and, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you, boys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you uh -huh. see you soon. All righty. If you happen to be in Manhattan on Monday night. No, he's not. He's going to American Idol. I already invited him. Oh, otherwise, come to the red carpet <laughs> where G and I are doing all the interviews for uh, Michael Damien's High Strong movie. Uh, good movie, by the way. About dancing, which I love. There you go. So he's gone, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed. But have a good team. time at your affair. He was fa he was fantastic. He's gone already. Oh. <laughs> well, somebody somebody tell him have a good time at his affair. We did. We had told him have a good time. Thank and we have to thank Constantine too. I told him 25 minutes. He's been on over an hour or so. We want to appreciate that. And he's fantastic. Listen, you can't buy this kind of uh, airtime. There you go. So Chad, what'd you think? You can't afford it. <laughs>